All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, the Sam Laporta effect on the Detroit Lions offense and what he can bring to the table this Saturday versus the Cowboys and how he can help these Detroit Lions continue their race to the two seed and possibly the number one seed in the NFC. Look, the Cowboys have uh, one of the best teams uh, against tight ends this season, one of, one of the best defenses this season in the entire league. And this is going to be a tough game for Laporta to, to really get going. And, and I feel like for him to have any effect on the game, uh, he, he's going to need some things to happen on the offense. And, and I want to be straightforward with this. This is only on paper, right? This has nothing to do with game day right now. The things that I'm speaking to are just on paper. And as you know, here at Rockdown Detroit Lions, we go deeper than just paper, right? We look into the stats. We look at the full picture. We want to paint you a picture that brings you the truth, the transparency, and the honesty, the honest, cold, hard facts and opinions about your team, the Detroit Lions. And I can promise you one thing. Nothing is bigger or badder than when a pride of Lions hunt together. Regardless of the size of the opponent, they don't lose. And these Lions are ready to shock the world, and they won't back down from anyone or anything. And I think that they're going to prove that this Saturday. So as you can already uh, assess, I have dove deep into pro football reference stats and some other uh, stat uh, websites and analytical tools that I have. And I found some things that, that don't make sense, but at the same time, they kind of make perfect sense uh, because one, you know, what Sam Laporta is doing. I mean, he, he's one of the best tight ends in the NFL right now, if not the best tight end in the NFL right now. And I know that's a bold statement. You've got uh, Kelsey and Kittle, uh, Komet, Evan Ingram, and you got all these guys. Uh, but what Sam Laporta is doing as a rookie, and if he continues to play this way, then I really don't care what people think otherwise. I really don't. Sam Laporta is taking over this league. He is going to be a force in the NFL for many more seasons to come. And hopefully all of those seasons in the Honolulu Blue. Of course, I'm going to give high praise to the Kelseys and the Kittles and the Ingrams, uh, you know, in the NFL. But these guys did not start uh, the way that Sam Laporta has. The last tight end to take the league by storm was Kyle Pitts. And, and when he did his thing in 2021, he put up 1,026 yards on the season. But what I have a problem with is that he only put up one touchdown. The whole season. And before that, before his season, it's literally been 40 years that a tight end has had more than six touchdowns and 800 yards in a single season, single rookie season. And when I think about game changers, when I think about impact players, I firmly believe that you need to have more than one convincing stat line that helps your team win and paints the, the complete picture of who you are as a player. Sam is only 26 yards short of 800 yards on the season. And he already has nine touchdowns with two games left. So he'll get his 800. I guarantee he'll get that. He should get a lot more than that. And he's already good for the sixth best rookie tight end ever. Sixth in yards, third uh, best in touchdowns as a rookie. And I firmly believe Laporta will finish in third place or better for yards and TDs uh, by the time that this season is over. Now, that's only counting the regular season. That's not counting the playoffs. That's a whole different stat line uh, by itself. So now let's, uh, let's, let's look at this weekend's game, how the Cowboys stack up against opposing offenses, primarily tight ends. And it certainly looks pretty grim on paper, like I said earlier. And the Lions are arguably going up against the toughest defense that they have faced all season. But I don't think that scares them. They've heard it all before, right? They've seen it all before. And they've gone up against some pretty darn good defenses already. They were not supposed to do what they did against the Saints or the Broncos, but they did it. They weren't supposed to have the success that they had against the Vikings, but they did it. And, and with the high that they're riding right now, I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to play a hell of a game this Saturday. But the one thing I want to make sure that everybody understands is I don't care about fantasy points per se. I don't care what, you know, what, what people want for their fantasy leagues. I care about wins and losses. Uh, it's just that the stats have, have really evolved with more information that's been driven by this fantasy league machine uh, and all fantasy sports betters. So the, it's really kind of been the catalyst for this extreme amount of information 
that's available now inside these stat lines. And that's why so many different, you know, stat sites exist right now. So I'm going to point to a couple uh, of fantasy marks here or fantasy stats. And the first one is, you know, the Cowboys ranked 97 overall in defense. They only allow 6.6 .6 fantasy points per game to tight ends, which is good for 12th in the league and our 10th best in the red zone against offenses scoring fantasy points. So that's pretty good. Uh, which which means also that they're they're pretty darn good uh, at keeping points off the board, right? And and offense is off the field quickly. The thing that I'm going to take into consideration, though, is when I look at Sam Laporta's best games of the season, and and the defenses that he went up against, and how those defenses, you know, have done against tight ends throughout this season. So the games that they come to mind are the Saints, the Falcons, the Broncos, and the Panthers. We'll start with the Saints. So the Saints uh, have only given up 738 yards and seven touchdowns this season. Two tight ends, which is 49 yards and less than half a touchdown per game on average. When Sam decided to go up against the Saints, he put up 140 yards and one TD. So he more than tripled their game average. Now, as far as TDs go, uh, he, he doubled it. Pretty good, pretty good game. His best game of the season, maybe. Yards-wise, sure. But I don't know if it's his best game of the season. I, I think that his best game came against the Broncos. Uh, and the Broncos have given up just under 1,000 yards at 998 yards on the season. And 10 TDs to tight ends, which is 66 yards uh, and less than three-quarters uh, of a touchdown per game on average. Now, we know that within that stat line, Sam Laporta was responsible for three of those touchdowns and 56 of those yards. So it's kind of a stark contrast between the Saints and the Broncos. You have the Broncos game where he had a ton of touchdowns, very little yards. And in the Saints game, ton of yards, only one touchdown. So he, he's able to work within you know both realms of, uh, I can do it all, and then I can do what needs to be done, which is I need to score. And I would much rather see him score than rack up a bunch of yards. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. The next game, the Panthers game, they've only allowed 623 yards and four touchdowns on the season to tight ends. And they are one of the premier defenses against tight ends this season. That ranks uh, for about 41 and a half yards per game and less than one quarter touchdown per game on average to tight ends. And when the Lions took on the Panthers, Sam put up 47 yards and two touchdowns. So again, he, you know, eight times their per game average on TDs. And just finished above uh, their game average for yards per game. So another great game. Again, beating the odds, beating the stats. And then the Falcons. Uh, they've given up 931 yards and four touchdowns to tight ends, which is just 62 yards per game and less than one quarter touchdowns per game on average. Sammy put up 84 yards in the TD, which again, uh, you know, beat their stat line, beat their average. And uh, again, eight times or four times their, their touchdown average. So next up is the Cowboys. And I'll ask you, I mean, do you even know how many touchdowns or how many yards the Cowboys have given up to tight ends this season? And when you, you look back at the, the four games that I've just given you, I will tell you that the Panthers game, the Panthers, um, are very close to the Cowboys. I mean, they're, they're right behind them. So the Cowboys have given up 613 yards and six touchdowns to tight ends on the season, which is about 41 yards per game and less than half a touchdown per game. So on paper, this, again, it's, it's going to be a tough matchup. But let's take a look at a few more things that I've, I've pulled together and, and why I feel like this is a prime opportunity for Laporta to have a big game. And, and I feel like it's going to fall on the backs of a couple other players of the Detroit Lions, that they too might have big games. And, and really, this all starts with the 49ers game versus the Cowboys. In week five, Kittle had a very similar game to Laporta uh, versus the Broncos. Not a ton of yards, 67, but he found the end zone three times. The 49ers won this game 42 to 10. The Cowboys also gave up 170 yards on the ground to the 49ers and two more TDs on the ground. So you're, you're probably thinking already, yeah, but Will, they got, they got Kittle and they got McCaffrey and they got Debo and, 
you know, Purdy, it's so what? The Lions have Gibbs. They have Monty. They have Jared Goff. They have one of the best offensive lines. So if you want to go, you know, mano a mano, and you want to compare, uh, you know, position to position, I'll stack the Lions up against just about any team out there when we're healthy. When we're healthy, I don't think that there's a team that the Lions can't beat. So my theory here is that the Lions will need to establish the run game, obviously. And, and I feel that Sam Laporta will, will start to, to cook uh, near the red zone. And, and that's another thing that's going to have to go right for the Lions is our red zone offense is going to have to get working. And, and we have to have some success. And by success, I mean we need to be 75% or better against the Cowboys because we're not going to get there very often. And if we do, then we're just having a wonderful day. Uh, the next game, the Lions should be focusing on. And then these are all games that I, I'm betting that they're reviewing this week with the players and pointing out a, a lot of things on tape. I watched some of the tape on the last couple of days. And I have to be honest with you that the Cowboys have some deficiencies. That they, they are exposed in areas. It's just whether or not the Lions can take advantage of it. I think that they can. So the next game they need to be focusing on is the Cardinals game. You're probably thinking, what the hell? It's the Cardinals. They've had a terrible season. Yeah, but the Cardinals put up 200 yards of rushing and two TDs on the ground versus the Cowboys. Zach Ertz, no effect on this game. Didn't need him. Uh, he didn't really need to be involved other than a blocker in this game. And again, uh, it's, it's showing that the Cowboys can be exposed on the ground. And if Ben Johnson can find ways to disguise the plays, mix up the play calling enough to keep the Cowboys guessing, we're going to have success. The Lions offensive line is, is going to have to be perfect again this week. They've got to be able to, to stave off the rush, uh, the pass rush. They've got to keep golf upright, and they've got to open some holes for Montgomery and Gibbs. The one thing I'm not worried about is Gibbs is an outside zone uh, you know, type of runner. So as long as we can get some blockers on the outside, Gibbs is going to do fine. So if they have a successful day, my prediction is that the Lions uh, will need to put up at least 125 yards on the, on the day uh, on the ground obviously opening up the passing game, which then turns into what the Lions do best, which is play action. I don't think that there's a better team in the NFL than the Lions with play action. I really don't. So the next game I studied was the Bills. And that was just the other day, a couple of weeks ago. They put up 266 yards of rushing in week 14. Clearly the Cowboys have some weaknesses, right? And, and what we're seeing with these games is it's on the ground. When they're going up against... I mean, even halfway decent running attacks or rush attacks. The, the Cowboys are failing big time. Three teams put up over 200 yards on the ground this season against the Cowboys. I, I think that to anybody that studies stats and, and, and really pays attention to the NFL, it's really hard to put up 200 yards. It's really hard to put up 150. And to have your defense allow 200 yards, you know, three times or more in a season, You've got some issues there. Now, I didn't look at every scenario, like who was in, you know, who was injured. Uh, I'm sure that there was some of that stuff going on. But we're also the tail end of the season. Not everybody's healthy. Everyone's banged up a little bit somewhere. I mean, since game one, guys have been banged up. So this is all kind of moving in a direction that I, I feel like the Lions can do what they do best, run the ball, open up the play action, and we're going to find some, some success this Saturday night. So Sam Laporta is currently ranked fifth in yards uh, for tight ends, targets. Uh, let me say that again. Sam Laporta is currently ranked fifth in yards, targets, and receptions, and first in touchdowns, and first in fantasy points for tight ends. He has shown that he is obviously one of the best tight ends in the league. But not only prior to the catch, it's after the catch. It's the yak yards. It's breaking tackles are two of his best traits as a tight end. I feel prior to the past, his, his reliability is that he gets open. And he's getting open because this guy's just not running solid routes. He's running a whole bevy of wide receiver route tree. Not many tight ends can do that. They're limited to a few routes. Not Sam. This guy's running all over the place. And I think that's what makes it difficult for defenses to really scheme against him because you just don't know where he's going to be and what he's going to do. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but up against just about any linebacker in the league, I mean, he's going to get free, especially against the defensive end. You know, if they have to swing out and cover him, you know, towards the flats, but it's, it's one of those things where 
you know, he, he's not just one of the best downfield blockers, you know, opening up holes for Gibbs and Monty, but he's also shown his intelligence at getting to the right spots at the right time, finding the defender in space, neutralizing that defender so that, you know, the running game can have some big gains. So he, he's doing a lot of things uh, at an incredibly high level of acuity. Sam has also shown that he can beat the average statistics, the average yards per game that each defense, uh, you know, he has faced limit tight ends to or limit the offense to. He has done this in all but one game this season, and that was versus the Broncos. But again, instead, he put up three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. So I think we can all agree that, that scoring TDs is obviously a much better trade-off than a bunch of empty yards on a stat sheet, right? I think you would agree. So this game, it's it's going to be a challenge, right? For Laporta, it's going to be a challenge for this Lions offense. Uh, it doesn't mean that they won't have success or that they won't play well. It just means that this is a big challenge. That's it. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, but where I, I do think that all of the Lions offensive playmakers need to have a great game. Uh, in order for the Lions to have a shot to win uh, in Dallas. It's a very difficult place to play. Cowboys uh, have a pretty historic win streak, and it needs to be broken. The Detroit Lions have been breaking records all season, franchise records. Uh, I mean, for a few seasons now, they've been breaking all sorts of records. And, and I feel like this is just one more that needs to happen. But based on Sam's ability, just purely based on Sam Laporta's ability and, and what he has done this season, against the better defensive playmakers in the league that he has faced, Sam is growing each week and learning more about this game, and, and that is really helping him become a well-rounded tight end. But he's also a receiver. You know, he's not your typical tight end. He's a, he's a receiving tight end. So here's my prediction. And, and this kind of looks at a couple of other games too. So Dallas Goder, he put up 50 yards in week eight, and there was a couple other tight ends that put up about 45 yards against the Cowboys. I feel like that's the basement in this game. I feel like that's the minimum amount of yards that Sam Laporta is going to put up is 50. So if you're a betting person and there's a, you know, a bet out there, I feel like that one's pretty solid. I think that Sam's going to put up more than 45 or 50 yards on Saturday. Um, if the Lions can establish this run game, and I do believe that they will, and it opens up the play action, I think that Sam Laporte is going to hang at least 70 on the Cowboys. And not one, but two touchdowns. Sam's going to have a solid game. Uh, I want to be clear that this, this success of Sam Laporta hinges on the run game and has to be the star of the game. So that's it for today's video on Sam Laporta. I appreciate you all watching. If this is the first time you guys have come across Rockdown Detroit Lions, and for a lot of those that you'll come back to watch these videos, I got a question for you. How come you haven't subscribed yet? More than 17,000 people come back to watch my videos every single week that haven't subscribed. I would love to have you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, we don't ask for much, uh, but your subscription helps our channel grow. And, and it helps the algorithm and, and allows our Lions content to reach more Lions fans around the world. And we would really appreciate it if you would just take a moment, hit the like button, uh, get that algorithm spinning for us. Send us a comment if you would like. Tell us what you think about Sam Laporta, you know, whether it's for this game or, you know, his career so far, his outlook uh, as a Detroit Lion. Uh, kid's a star, man. He's playing uh, incredibly well. And, and we are very, very lucky to, to have somebody like him on this team. And, and we're very lucky that Brad Holmes made the moves that he did to, to bring Sam in. So, again, I can't stress enough. I appreciate all of you guys. You are clearly and always the best sponsors uh, and supporters of this channel that anybody could ever ask for. You know, we started this... January 1st of this year, didn't really get going uh, until about, I don't know, October of this year with, with YouTube primarily, and, uh, and it's been great. You guys have been wonderful, and we love it. So, all right, Lions and NFC North champs, and man, I, I just, I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know how to, I guess, take it all in, because it, it still kind of hasn't hit, like, wow, we actually did it, you know? So, it's incredible. Lions are doing great things, and many more great things to come. So we'll, uh, we'll see you all in the next video. There'll be some cards popping up if you want to watch the next one. Otherwise, please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Go One Pride. Go Detroit Lions. Take care. Bye-bye.